guys before the video starts today we want to get your opinion on the twin engine go-kart now we have these two duromax 440 cc engines they have uh, governors deleted the go power sports 50 pound springs jet air filter and exhaust uh so they're just stage one pretty much got go power sports stage one and make sure to check out the links in the video's description where you can find all the parts from go power sports and also these engines on generatorfactoryoutlet.com and always watch out on our social media for a discount code you can get up to 20 percent off at times off these duro max 440s and they are a bigger bore than a 420 so you're going to make more power when you build them our question is we want you guys to comment below and let us know what you want to see on this cart of course for the people that's been following this build we messed up on the front end when we did this cart originally we're basically going to cut the whole entire front end off and completely redesign it so we don't have that problem anymore well since we're taking off that front end we can do one of two options we can leave the twin engines and basically fully build them so we have uh, some heads that's been milled 70 thousandths that's been ported we can put some Makuni carbs a high torque cam billet rod and flywheel in these engines and really make them perform we can get about 60 to 80 horsepower out of these two engines together on this cart so that's option one rebuild the front end and build both these engines and then basically finish out the frame brace it in a couple places do sheet metal and then get it powder coated or we have a 2003 honda rencon atv outback that is four wheel drive it's a 650 liquid cooled and it basically needs some cvs and maybe a top end rebuild so what we was thinking is since we're rebuilding the front end on this cart we could go ahead and rebuild it for four wheel drive and take these two engines off and put the atv engine but that is completely up to you guys just know if you guys want to see the twin engine stay on this cart and get fully builded built then when we get in the new shop that's when we'll do this build we'll do that front end build these engines up and then we'll build uh the four-wheel drive go-kart its own chassis so it's not like if you guys don't pick the four-wheel drive setup the atv setup that we're not going to use it we're still going to build its own chassis but would you guys rather see all that go on this chassis so make sure to comment below and we're going to put a post out on facebook and instagram here in the next few days about this so make sure to go vote on it and we want to know your opinion because that's what we're going to go with so let us know and let's get into wiring and finishing a bunch of stuff on this cart we're just going to pull the belt through here and this is going to pre prevent this belt from wanting to slide down these tubes
Okay, so we have everything done on the twin engine, all the wiring anyways. The only thing we got left to do is hook up the chokes. And I don't know if I'm going to hook up the chokes right now because if I'm going to wait to see what you guys uh, say you want to see on this cart. Because I don't want to waste time building brackets for the choke cables if we're taking these engines off. So, I'll show you how I done up the key switch and we'll work from the key switch back on this buggy. People have been asking me about wiring videos, so this is uh, the best I can do right now. And we'll do a full how-to wire on a couple different vehicles in the future. They just take a lot of work. So we'll start at the key switch box and work our way back to the engines. So on this key switch box, you can see all the way to the left, we have our key switch. Now, all this is going to do is turn our accessory on. This is not going to start our engine. The uh, Now, if we move to the right, you'll see a choke on bottom, a starter button in the middle, and a LED at the top. The one on the left. The setup on the left is for the left engine, then we have the right engine, and then we have at the very uh, right, we have a toggle switch for our headlights. So basically, when one engine's running, the toggle switch that corresponds with that engine will light up. So you'll know what engine dies um, and what engine is running. So we used a Kurt, I think the brand is. This battery box is made for a trailer. Um, we just ran a waterproof grommet through the side of it. So all this is waterproof other than this little hole. We need to uh, use some like hot glue and putty it up. But this is a trailer break, uh, breakaway box for a battery on your trailer. So it is a perfect little box to use for things like this. I think that box looks awesome and it's cool that we have an LED and a starter button for each engine. Now if you want to kill a single engine, you can't do that with the way I wired this. One key switch kills both engines. The harness goes back and we have this relay and fuse box right here you'll see we only have one relay and that is for the headlight then we have two fuses one is the headlight fuse and then the other fuse is the accessory fuse so anything that would run off the key accessory hot would be fused right there and why we did this big box is because if we ever added more stuff like a winch and all kinds of stuff we have all the wiring ready to uh, just wire up into this box went with a lawnmower battery from napa this is 230 code cranking amps that's about the size these batteries are like 35 bucks that's about the perfect size battery for these engines i know you guys saw us solder up a bunch of lines why we soldered up so many is because for one each engine has a hot running to the starter solenoid from the battery now that's going to give the starter power when we turn the switch over and it's going to feed the power into the starter then we have three grounds per side so basically the way I like to ground my engines is if you look and there is a, you know, it's kind of hard to see, but right here we have a eight gauge ground hooked to the block and it runs down to the swing arm. Then from that we have it daisy chained to the frame of the go-kart. The reason you do this is because you don't want everything grounded to your swing arm and not grounded to your frame because then your frame is anything you ground on this side of the vehicle is going to make ground connection through your pivot point if that makes any sense so you want everything linked up so you're not ever going to get a bad ground engine grounded to the swing arm swing arm grounded to the chassis we have both engines done the same way then for our main ground we used a four gauge ground from the battery and that runs down to this post on the chassis so everything's tied together and grounded together how we work these leds on the key switch so basically if we just hooked it up standard these engines wouldn't run you can't hook up two engines to one kill switch because the uh, ignition coil on this engine will push a signal to the other engine and make it fire when this one fires so whatever engine is started first is going to make the other engine fire at the same time so what we've done is on screen you can see there you got these diodes these diodes are only going to let power go one way now what we did was we put a diode in between the engine and the ground wire going up to the toggle switch so basically that's only going to let a ground signal go to the engine and not let the signal go back the other way if that makes any sense so when we ground it it's going to send ground to the coil and kill the engine but it's not going to push the signal from this engine to the other so we put one of those diodes on both engines to keep the power from running the opposite way we've done the same thing on these leds so to make the led light up when the engine is running we're using a voltage regulator because it's not good just to hook up these charging coils straight to an engine. You want to uh, balance that signal. So you can buy these uh, chart these voltage regulators in the video's description. They're four wire and basically they have a ground, a hot output, and two 
inputs from two charging coils. Basically the output from that voltage regulator goes and ties in with the wire that goes to the LED up there. Then after those two wires tie in together we have another diode letting power only go one way to the battery. So basically it can send its charging signal out to the battery but the battery can't send power back therefore going to that LED and lighting it up if that makes sense. So the only way those LEDs can light up is if the engine they're hooked up to is making power. We're gonna know when an engine's running and when an engine dies and what engine died by those LEDs up there. That is really handy. So I've always wanted to wire this. The only thing we haven't hooked up, like I said, is the choke cables because you gotta make a bracket that wraps around the air filter that will grab this choke. And when you pull out on the choke, it would pull this way. And then when you push it in, it would push it back. I do think the twin engines would be really stout, fully built. I think it would be a pretty crazy video but I'm wanting you guys to fully make the decision on this. Uh, that's up to you. Everything's soldered on this buggy. We soldered every single connector. You can see those diodes right there. I heat shrinked, I soldered everything and used uh, marine heat shrink, which has uh, like hot glue inside of it. So it's really waterproof. And I'm gonna wrap up these wires and stuff. The only reason, you know, we're sitting at this point is because I'm waiting on you guys to let us know. Uh, so I, what I'll do is We'll start both engines and we'll show you what those LEDs look like up front. Okay, so when we turn this switch on, it's everything's ready. If we flip that, we have headlights. As you can see, the brightness glow around it. These headlights are crazy bright. So like I said, we have our choke, we have our electric start button for the driver's side engine and the LED. So when we hit this button, this light, you'll see the charging coil uh, putting out power. So if we give it a little gas, she should fire up. And I do have the back jacked up. Then we can start the second engine. So what we've done, we've choked out the, uh, the passenger side engine. Just to show you, it died. So since it died, that LED went off. So we know we're only running on one engine. So when we hit the kill switch, it kills both engines. I did want to do separate kill switches, one for each engine. But I figured the best way, if anything was ever happened, I would rather have one switch kill both engines and we'd be good to go. But uh, she's all wired and uh, ready to ride other than the crappy front end. So remember guys, please comment in the comment section below letting us know what you want to see. Two built 440s or a uh, four-wheeler setup. And make sure to check out the links in the video description. I'm going to have everything I use to wire this. It's going to be a big parts list. And then we're also going to have everything so basically I'll break it up into two sections in the, the video description. You'll have all the stuff I use to wire it and then we'll have the original build uh, parts list. Make sure to go to generatorfactoryoutlet.com and you can buy these 440 Duro Maxes. They're super cheap and we do have a discount code coming out real soon. Make sure to also go to Go Power Sports. We have a ton of parts. Of course, their 40 series, their exhaust, their performance kits, uh, their top plates are on these engines. We have everything listed below guys those links do help us to continue to do videos we do have a video coming out on the property it shows where we made the track and everything so make sure uh to stay tuned for that and we have uh we got a bunch of videos coming out the next few weeks three to four videos a week uh for a few weeks so uh, stay tuned for that let us know what you want to see thank you guys for watching we love you and god bless